All right, Kevin, got your new Washington here. Got your fans on there for you and everything. So they come in at about 122 degrees, I found, if you leave it in the factory default setting. So I was setting one of these up for another customer yesterday and discovered that it's about 122 degrees Fahrenheit at the 50 C mark. And then they'll run usually until about, the radio drops down about 10 degrees Fahrenheit and then they kick back off automatically and then they'll come back on as need be. That's if you leave it at the default. At 30 C, they run all the time. So I personally probably would run them all the time just because if it's there, you might as well run it. But that's just me. All right, we're gonna do our FM deviation here. Let me set this up. I want about 4.1. So I'm gonna set the scale here for what? I'm gonna set this scale so that that's 4.2 up at the top and the bottom. So I want about 4.1. You can also just look at the digital display here. Um, that's good. So there's about 4.1 and radio will sound a little bit better. It's not going to be like this huge jump in anything, but it will sound better. So AM power, I'm just going to skip through this. Top is going to be, I'm sorry, top is going to be, because you have these settings here. Top is going to be 16. This one will be about 10. This one will be 4. This one will be 1. You don't need to use the power limitation feature, but the radio will automatically do it if the radio picks up too much temperature. I mean, since you have the fan kit on here, I doubt that it will ever get that hot, but... If you want to use the power limitation, it's in the menu. You don't have to run this in the high power setting if that's what you choose to do. And for me, I probably would run it in the like A4 because I don't need that extra power. It really, I mean, it's it is what it is. Some might say, why buy a high power radio, higher higher power radio like this if you're not going to run it? But if you don't need it, you don't need it. If you do, then run it. You know, obviously, if you're using this on HF, then. We should already know how that applies to power as use what you need when you need it, not just because you have it. This is going to be for your AM. This is low power mod. So it's at like 76%. It's pretty low. It's better there. I like about 95, 96, somewhere in that range. So anything more is just a waste. You're not going to get out any farther or anything. And That's more for the CB operators that they always think that, you know, the CB only guys, which a lot of my customers are CB and ham. So I think those guys really understand more about what a quality signal really needs versus just balls to the wall. This is the high power setting. It took me a long time to really learn what really makes a good quality signal transmission wise versus just balls to the wall there, there's how it looks there so that looks really good sometimes I don't show that but um, if you if you don't want to learn things and you just want to run things a certain way I guess that's what it is but I really enjoy learning and improving and just going forward not looking back here's the top modulation it's your 16 watt carrier. 
so it looks really good too you know it, it's one of those things it's where do you want to go with it I've been going more into ham radio a lot lately so now we're going to measure the factory sideband performance the TOI it's an important feature to measure um, one of these days I'll hook up one of my other radios that I have here that I haven't done anything with it's a TRE top one I just bought one just to check it out I thought it looked cool but uh, I'll hook that up and we'll kind of do a test on that and just see how that performs but that would be like down the road because I really don't have time once I get done with this radio um, I'm pretty much caught up um, the QT80s are delayed as far as me getting them on the site and getting them ready. I just, um, today I woke up with a massive migraine, which I do suffer from sometimes. I haven't had one in months, so that kind of killed my day, my morning, and yeah, very, very, uh, nasty when those hit. And they always hit on my days off from my job, and that's a shame because that's when I get the most accomplished. So, right now I'm just matching up the two tones. I have a medication that does a good job, but it kind of wears you out a little bit. But without that, it's it's just definitely a suffer. So if any of you guys out there that watch the videos and stuff if you suffer from migraines I think you'll know what I mean they just come and man they're not fun so here's the TOI it's about 18 or so um, it, again it doesn't look horrible up here sometimes you can still have a good looking two-tone but still have horrible TOI and the two kind of go together in a lot of ways but that's where I'm wondering what the top one TRE will look like so I'm going to go back in and adjust this now the president radios are a little different you can't really adjust it in the menu you have to just make a measurement outside like this the fans are running at full tilt right now too and you can probably hear them so again that's because I have it set to 30 so what I'll do is make the adjustment but to see the change you have to get out of that and come back to this yeah, that's how it looks now. It's right at about 30. That's how I like it to be. And that's how it looks up there. It's, it's a little more rounded and looks really nice. Obviously, the PA section, there's that board in there that, it's my understanding, it ramps up the voltage to the MOSFET PA. And that gives it sometimes that little bit of like that jaggedness that you see on the upward slope there. You can see that sometimes on AM too, with these kind of radios. So, you know, there's some some things there that, you know, maybe, you know, going in the future someday, they might incorporate maybe a higher quality PA and uh, make the radios better in that regard. But I think they're going to cost more. But I, I think a lot of guys would be willing to pay for that added benefit, I think of a little more robust and reliable PA like some of the big HF brands use. So hopefully in the future maybe we can convince them that people would still be interested in the products even though they may cost more. But it's a good radio, I mean they sound good on, e on HF, I guess if you want to use it on CB they'll sound good there too. Um, right now I have the span setting on. So you can click this and go anywhere you want in the radio. There's the bottom. Anywhere you want. I don't use the band setting on these. I kind of refuse to. I like this band setting. I can go where I want to. Once you have it set like this, it'll stop blinking eventually. And then you're in your offset anyway, so you don't really, it doesn't matter. And if you want to keep going, you just keep going. So, obviously there's, is there the skip there? No. So yeah, we don't skip anything. We actually see our, they call them A. But yeah, there's no skipping of anything here in this format. This is the better way to run the radio, I think. 
but uh, to each his own on how you want to operate your equipment. But I like this way better. If I'm on HF, I can cruise around pretty quickly. You know, go where I need to go. If somebody's working, like, say here, for instance, I can get there. And I can dial them in. So, I'm going to put the mic on here. And check the power. Fans are, they're kicking. That's because I have the uh, level set to make them run all the time. So this is sideband, sideband power, one, two, three, four, five, check, check, hello, one, two, one, two, hello, radio, check, check, one, two, one, two. So again, it's doing the rated output, uh, about 80 watts at times, and sometimes a little less. So, you know, that's to be expected. We're not uh, giving it all she's got, you know, as they would say. So we have a more respectable and cleaner signal now. And every once in a while, I mean, even on the front, you can still see full deflection there. So it is still working good. And if you don't have a good quality peak reading meter, you're not going to see this power anyway. So I'm not going to take too much time with that anymore. I made that video. Some choose not to learn a little more about the hobby and understand things. That's, that's their prerogative, I guess. But at the same time, it's beneficial there's FM power it's about 51 I heard those fans kind of draw back with the current draw right now we're drawing about eight amps or something on my power supply I'm actually only using my actually I am this is my RS70 but about eight amps of continuous draw but it's you know it's working fine so it'll go all the way down to one watt if you choose to lower it I think with this radio you could probably run full duty cycle 50 watts continuous with this due to the fact that it's got the fans to cool it. As long as you're not talking for 10 minutes at a time or something, you'll probably be okay. But again, that's just my interpretation with the fans helping cool things. Um, let's come up back up here. Oops, I don't want that. So here's the spectrum analyzer, so what frequency are we on here? 28476. Wow, I picked a weird one. Whoops. 28.476. Alright. So here's our spectrum analyzer look of the what is this 20 kilohertz again? It's usually what I use. Yep, 20 kilohertz. Hello, check check. 1212. Hello. So it seems to be doing good. It's not uh, splattering into adjacents at all. And everything's staying under that zero dBm line, which is preferred. Power-wise, we're still up there around the full potential of the radio. So you know, it's still a good power output. I wouldn't recommend um, running this radio with something small. I mean, yes, you can turn it down, and if that's what you choose to do, you can do that. Amplifier-wise, but. Uh, you know, generally speaking, there's no difference between running it like this or running it at 100 watts with like a 203 RM or something. So you're probably better off just not worrying about the RM203 because even though they work and everything, then you have to incorporate a low pass filter into the equation and all that. I mean, if you have one, then, then obviously you could do it, but this radio doesn't need a low pass filter. It's built into the board, so the low pass filtering is on board. So it's a very clean radio on the output side anyway. So you're probably better off just running the radio and then trying to incorporate something else with it. Now, obviously, if you want something that's gonna run like 320 or more watts with it, then yeah, then that's up to the operator. And on HF, I mean, you know, we wouldn't be using AM here anyways, but we would be using like this band with this mode and generally speaking unless your amplifier is going to push you up over like 350 watts or something because I mean at times we're almost hitting 90 out of this it's not really going to give you much of a benefit so you know a couple hundred watts isn't going to do a whole lot for you and I think the guys that are a little more into the amateur radio scene will understand what I'm saying. The guys that aren't probably just want more power because they have power and they think power is the end all be all of radio communication. And yes, power is important, but so is antenna. And without the right propagation, you're never going to get anywhere. So 
it's all about the propagation so that's pretty much it um, we're gonna I'm gonna shut the fans off for you I'm gonna put them back to 50 for you I'll let you decide on where you want to run them probably somewhere if you wanted a little compromise somewhere around the 40 range is probably going to make those fans kick on more like 110 degrees Fahrenheit or something you can play with it and based on your operating preference on how hot you make the board you got the temperature readout here for you so you can figure out what's best for you and um, you know go on with that so hopefully you enjoy the radio uh, I got to put the the sticker on the side it doesn't really matter but since they give me one I will put the stickers on for you and then you get a spare set sometimes I've noticed a couple packs didn't have the spare set so luckily they give you two in one of the packs but generally you get two in each pack so uh, luckily um, I was able to you know put them on for the last order but he didn't get a spare set with his which doesn't really mean anything but Maybe that was missed at the factory or something. So I hope you enjoy it, and uh, we'll get this heading your way today. 73.